Okay, so we just finished a problem where we had a, a ball kicked at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal at an initial velocity of 20 meters per second, and we found that the distance it goes before it hits the ground again was the range equation. But here's the thing, that range equation is only useful for that one situation, level ground at an angle. That just doesn't happen very often. It also doesn't tell you other things, like what if I wanted to know the highest point that this ball goes up to? So we're going to do that problem now. What is the highest point? I'm going to call that H max. Okay. How high does this go? So if we were doing this kicked straight up, you would probably know how to do that. I've got my 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 stuff, what is it? Y naught, Y, V naught, V, A, and T. And you know what? I'm gonna throw a little Y, oops, sorry, a little Y on here. This is the velocities in the Y direction. Now if we'd gone straight up, I could fill this out. I'd be like, okay, well it starts on the ground. I don't know that this, this is what I want. That would be my initial velocity. At the top of its path, its velocity will be zero, so this is zero. Acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and time we don't know. Now here's the thing. This is not this is not kicked straight up, so we can't just put 20 meters per second right here. That will not work. Absolutely not. Will not work. Oops. Sorry. Okay. I have to break up this velocity into its x velocity and its y velocity. Sorry, this is so crooked. I don't know why I can't draw straight today. Okay. Now, this is the components of the knot, so actually I should put little zeros on there too. Oh, it's really squished now. I'm sorry. I hope you have a high definition screen. Okay, now, I'm only concerned for this problem with the y component of initial velocity. So I'm just going to do that. Okay, I know that the y component of any vector is the vector magnitude times the sine of the angle it makes with the x-axis. So in this case, that would be 20 meters per second times the sine of 30. Now, you do actually have a, um, an option here. I can do this, so I'm going to do this and get the decimal, which in this case, the sine of 30 is 1 half, so this comes out nice. But sometimes that won't come out nice. It, I mean, the only sign that's nice is 30 degrees. Everything else is a, is a radical, an irrational number, so you'll have to do a decimal. Sometimes you don't want to do that until the end, or you're going to get rounding errors. So it may be a good idea to instead just write 20 sine of 30 degrees in here, and then you plug it at the end. I'm going to do that just to show you what I mean, but keep in mind that that, that is 10 meters per second squared. OK, so I actually have enough now to do it. Notice I'm not even using this. I could use that if I wanted to answer like, how far does it go, or how far does it go in a certain amount of time, or all kinds of stuff. I think one of your homework questions asked that, like, where is it an x at this time? You do, you use this. Anyway, I want to know how high it goes. I've got four of my six things filled in, so I should be able to solve for everything else. Let's choose an equation. Um, let's see, I want y, so that rules out the middle equation, and I don't have t, so that rules out the big long one, the top one. I'm going to have to use this one. Oh, I'm going to put y's on there too, so, so I'm really clear on what I'm using here. 2a change in position. There we go. Well, that's 0, so ignore it. What else is zero? This is zero, so it's gone too. So I get zero equals v naught y squared plus two a y. I want y, so I'm going to move this to the other side. 
negative v not y squared. And I'm going to divide by 2a to get that alone, 2a. That's going to give me y. Okay. Now at this point, I would plug in the numbers. If I were putting this in the calculator, I would probably like physically type this in, in there. I, I would really literally type it in there, especially if you've got one of those awesome TI scientific calculators. Okay, but um, since it comes out nicely, I'm just going to use it for this one. Let's switch to another color. So I'm going to get negative 10 squared over 2 times negative 9.8. If I put all that in a calculator, I get 5.1 meters. Okay, so that's how high it goes. So it, it's going to do something like this. It's going to go, oops, that's not how it's going to go. It's going to go like, we plop. And the highest it goes right there, oh, I really can't draw straight today. I am sorry, is 5.1 meters. Okay, now I could do things like, well, how long does it take to get the maximum height? So I do all the same stuff, but I'd solve for t. Or I could say, how far does it get, or how far is it from the launch point when it's at its maximum height? Well, I could find t and then come over here and use x. Let's see, let's use um, this funny slate color. Okay, I could use the x velocity so that the distance it goes would have been the x velocity um, component times time. So I would take that time and put it in here where v naught in the x direction is the magnitude of v naught times the cosine of the angle. And that would not come out to a nice number. Okay, there's lots you can do, but the first step, the very first step of any um, projectile motion problem where the object was launched at an angle is you've got to break it up into Oh, come on. You've got to break it up into the y component and the x component of the initial velocity. And then you have to deal with the y stuff and the x stuff separately.